Diamond International. So we take them to Brentwood, uh, not Brentwood, we move to another one. Oh. And they clean them and dry them and put them on the train. Okay. So we're just, other than picking them and delivering them, okay. that's as far as we go. Okay. But, so where is the? where do you deliver them to? How far away is it to the dryer? Uh... uh Oh, the dryer is up there in Brentwood. They do. We have a dryer down there, but it hasn't. We haven't used it in okay. 15 years. Okay. So the dryer diff- is like, is it Zepeda or? I, I, I don't know. Okay. I haven't seen it in 20 years. <clears throat> About the time I went to Hawaii, I got tired of the walnuts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You have to freeze them first, though, right? But is that before the drying process? You no. don't freeze them. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. Because that's just what I read. You run them okay. through, and you husk them, and they uh-huh. put them in these big bins, and they run a fan with lights or some heat mm-hmm. source mm-hmm. and then you have to rebag them haul them wherever you're going that's mm-hmm. one reason it wasn't our time and money it wasn't worth us drying yeah. them because yeah. they only charge like four cents a pound to yeah. dry and yeah. clean them wow. yeah. oh, that's and funny. they deliver them to yeah. the railhead yeah 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 so I know prices went down though last year didn't they uh well, they, they did, although, you know, it was sort of interesting. We're just updating the Walnut Cost Study, and so I was looking at prices mm-hmm. for the last couple of years. So the last time we did a cost study, and yeah. we looked at prices, and we usually do a ranging analysis. So it's like, let's look at what the prices have been for the last five years and project ahead for the next five years yeah. so that we can put mm-hmm. a range there. Yeah. And so people can go, here's my yield, here's the dollar per pound, here's what I, you know, can Break expect. even Yeah, point. that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. And so... Um, and, and so we published this study in 2013, mm-hmm. uh, in the spring of 2013. By the fall of 2013, the harvest, we were already off the charts because the, oh. the price is up to like $2 a pound or $2.10 oh, a pound. Oh, so it changes quickly. Like yeah. You know, this, last, this yeah. last short period, it changed quickly, but now we're back down to about a dollar a pound. Is that because it, of the drought, it, it went up, or what was the reasoning for the price jump? <clears throat> uh, because there was a shortage of walnuts. Oh, okay. That, they, okay. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, we've had some of our lower yields in the last three four <clears throat> years. Last year was pretty good because of the drought. Because yeah. of the dry farm, mm-hmm. you're going to be more influenced by yeah, that than somebody exactly. irrigated. Yeah, exactly. And this year we're hoping better yet, but it's still wow. too early to tell. I, I think felt- it should be good. Now, here's what the deal is with with walnuts and other tree crops: is that the buds that make fruit buds, yeah. and nut buds, they were all formed last year during the drought. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So, you, yeah. okay. so you might still this year you might still have a shorter crop because yeah. there were oh. perhaps less fruit buds formed. Mm-hmm. But it could also be that the fruit buds are formed like there's low set last year, which sets it up for a good set this year yeah. if the conditions are right. And it could be that the you know that it was short last year because the flower buds were formed, but they they didn't. It mature. should be good because last year was an ex- exceptionally warm winter mm-hmm. all winter and I I know mm-hmm. I don't have heat I have a yeah. fireplace and yeah. when the temperature gets low I have a fire I mm-hmm. only had three all winter yeah mm-hmm. last year so that means that when those buds were developing mm-hmm. they had warmer nights and evening that should work in our favor right it, it, it actually is usually the opposite that happens because okay. in the winter time when you're doing your fires is when the trees like to have a nice cold weather because they need a certain amount of cold yeah. winter chill well, uh, in order to, to mature the buds and come out of dormancy correctly. That's like, you know, you need that fluctuation change for the husk to crack and all yeah, that yeah. and for it to develop. So that That's would right. make sense that yeah. a colder evening would yeah. do them better then. So then we might not get it. But we had decent in terms of the winter chill thing so the cold is one thing and then um, we had a lot more had a lot more rain with a lot more overcast and cloud cover and, and big rains all at once we so got like three inches instead of our usual right. quarter inch it's yeah. all good so yeah. you've got a lot of water and you know I looked up um, the soil on the soil map and yeah. it, this is the most beautiful class one agricultural soil it goes to china you know it's so deep oh really okay. so a lot that's good of to know. water that's storage good kind of clay-ish. Clay-ish. clayish clayish yeah. holds a lot of water yeah, and yeah. it's really deep so those mm. roots yeah. can get now way i don't down know what there. the water table here but ours our water table is literally between 28 and 24 feet mm-hmm. tap root is mm-hmm. about as tall as it goes up mm-hmm. yeah. so we're pretty much always in a source of some water during the drought it yeah. only got yeah. down to 33 feet deep Mm-hmm. I just felt so, some rain. I don't Maybe. know if it's yeah, the coming. same water table yeah. the same here. One thing I wanted to do is to get your... One of the initial questions we have as a new owner is, are there trees here that are past their point 
that are literally dead or dying that we need to take out pretty quickly here. So you want to take a quick Well, you know, tour? in terms of the walnut trees, it's a little yeah. difficult to tell right now because they haven't come out of dormancy yet. So okay. once they leaf out, you'll yeah. see really how vigorous they look and how, and I see somebody's looks pretty happy. So yeah. I'm looking at the timing. This must be one of your pollinizers yeah. because it's okay. the first one to yeah. go a little bit earlier and all the, see all the little catkins? This is all the pollen coming off. Yeah, okay. And if I could find one, I'd show you female flowers, but I'm not quite sure they're ready to set yet. Okay. So the fact that uh, some of the others are delayed is not a worry? Yeah. No, no oftentimes that will happen. Same. Still, okay. be, they okay. don't. So what ends up happening is, see the little, um, they're not quite yet. So the, the, the little tuft of leaves. Yeah. Right at the growing point of the tuft of leaves. Oops, uh -huh. let's go See, pull it down. See, taller than I. If you could get it down, that'd be great. Okay. There we go. Now, which one you want? I'm just looking at. So up, right up this guy. You want me to yeah. break it let's off? Let's take it off. Yeah. Let's see if we can. That's not gonna break you. <laughs> <laughs> you there's some, got some walnuts. So here's all the here's all the male parts that are sending out the pollen. Okay. When they've gotten dark like oh. this, they're a little bit the pollen is all spent. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so these ones are just getting ready to do their pollen. They're still oh, okay. yellow, yeah, well, see? see? Yeah, they so they're gonna open up a little bit later. And the female flowers, you can't see them right now, but they're gonna be right here mm -hmm. in the base and they're tiny. Mm -hmm. They're like, you so know, it's a, it's a they're like this big. Tree, then. Yeah. It hmm. can self-pollinate if hmm. the females and the males hmm. come out at the same time. Oh. So now we see all the male pollen shedding and the female flowers aren't ready yet. Okay. And this is why we put sometimes two varieties together. Hmm. Because here the, this one is shedding, this oh. one is male and is shedding now, whereas okay. maybe those ones will come out with the female flowers first. And this yours, one comes out with the male flowers. Yours are first. different than ours and I'm trying to remember, I used to know there's several, there's I think three or four trees that are, were different for that reason that yeah. Charlie put in uh -huh. years ago. So oh, you're covered. The so they, yeah. And I imagine you might get some down from Mars, right? Yeah, absolutely, because it's wind. all windblown yeah. and yeah. it moves around in the air masses very easily. So yeah. Yeah. so do you know what varieties they are here? Do you have uh, any record of what? These are black walnut uh, roots with uh, English yeah, walnut. She's talking craft. about Hartley. I I think yeah. they're oh. heart, Hartley and because I, I harvested them for them years ago and yeah. I remember I oh. had to, I uh, got it written Frank down Hitt? and said, no, Frank we're Hitt? Frank Hitt's. Okay. And that's one reason we've never put oh, ours. Oh, you're talking about the cultivar, I'm sorry. Cultivar, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's yeah. why we've never put ours, theirs with mm. ours and shipped them up together okay. because theirs are different than all of ours and we'd have to have Diamond come out and do this check yeah. them oh, and all right. of that because yeah. that was the next step because i what one of the things that's difficult when you're just a, you know a, a little property all by yourself here yeah. and now you're not by yourself because there yeah. are other ones <laughs> around but it's sort of like it, it um you know the the harvesting and the shaking and the pickup and then you got to take them to a yeah, dry they, yard and if you can combine those efforts together yeah, yeah there's no economy of those, scale it would help yeah. but um because you're not going to have your own small, hmm. equipment usually for a small little operation. Yeah. Um, and so, but if you have equipment, yeah, uh, you that would use, I've shaken yeah. this. So, in terms of getting them shaken and picked yeah. up, that's a good thing. And then getting them over to a dryer, so they don't have to happen at the same time. And as a matter of fact, it's better if your walnuts come off. Your walnuts probably come off later. Later, than his we're uh, real, we're usually they're bitching that we don't have our walnuts in because they're ready to shut oh. down for the winter. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. So we're yeah. use, we're we're later. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And you were telling me you can't leave them on the ground very long because worms will get in them, right? So that co a couple days at most, right? Well, no, yeah. I think, well, we let people <clears throat> glean for weeks afterwards and they're still fine. From the ground? That's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. good. Yeah, we always, okay. all our friends come out and they'll literally take bags, gummy yeah. snack bags. Yeah, and, yeah. I, th uh -huh. and I think it Two, has to do with after. sort of the local situation. Yeah. If we did that in Brentwood, there'd be worms all over there's the place because there's a oh. lot of walnuts over there. Yeah. They're okay. all bugs that, you know, are attracted to walnuts. There's a lot of them over there, you okay. know, so when you've just got a fewer... Yeah, unless it rains a lot once they're you've mm -hmm. done picking and they're down and the leaves they get in there, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have a problem with that mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We and, never have. And you don't spray for pest. You don't use we pesticides. Don't, we've never sprayed nothing. a thing. Okay. 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 Ours. okay. Never, and we have never had any real problem. The only time was last year when I was for 
up at nights and then you gave the a thing on the uh, thing that's the only time we've had any concern okay and you said there was nothing so yeah, I think it was the drought yeah so it's sort of interesting because with franquettes they're one of the last varieties to harvest they're the yeah. last ones to come off so they they um, leaf out late they flower late everything happens late so they miss a lot of the stuff that earlier hmm. varieties like pain or uh, I'm just thinking of the older varieties because these are older mm -hmm. varieties. They're not. Yeah. They're not the yeah. fancy yeah. new varieties. You know, they're the older varieties, and I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't at all be surprised if they were Hartleys. Um, okay. Yeah. But uh, and this one is a little bit earlier, so. Gosh, I don't. Anyway, I don't know what they are. But do do you have? So usually when you deliver your nuts. If you have the records of what they did before. I have one, I have one set of records from 2007. Because usually that's a variety oh, I might be able to tell you from right the last now harvest. what they are. Yeah. And, and yeah. did they identify the variety? Because usually they go in with I go back and look at it. Okay. I didn't see anything written on it. But, okay. Uh, okay, he's going to. Yeah. I'm going to call okay. my dad. He might know. Like this one's just delayed, it looks like, right? Is it, yeah. It looks it just, like it's about to bud. They just haven't come out yet. Okay. Either they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't come out yet. Uh, so here's some that are just starting to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the ones that come out the same yeah. are the same varieties. Oh, and, okay. You know, oh. if they come out at the same time. And so okay. it might be worthwhile for you to, at this time, yeah. to help you identify the varieties. Oh, is to, to tag the ones that are to coming tag out soon. the ones that are coming out of the same. So everything that has, okay. like, catkins now, you might oh. want to get some flagging tape and put yellow flagging tape around the ones that are now. Oh, okay. And then when you see some coming out in a few weeks or so a little think bit the, later. Do you think the early ones might be Hartley then? They could be Hartley okay. or Payne. Payne. Or okay. Eureka. Hartleys, I'm pretty sure. How about I'm... Eureka? Huh? How about Eureka or Payne? No, it might be Payne, not okay. Eureka. Okay. Mm. But I think Hartley and something else. Uh, I think okay. we missed, they're out doing some. Yeah, I think because the owner uh, we bought from, she was old, she was in her 90s, and uh -huh. there wasn't very little, if any, maintenance done for 10 years. Uh -huh. yeah, no no pruning, so we just had it pruned yeah. light, lightly. Oh, I was wondering about this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was like just last week. We had okay. a, a light pruning, okay. anything hanging down, pointing down, and crossing good. branches, etc. Okay, that's good. Do, do they need a heavy pruning very often? Uh, they do not. Um, okay, that's good to know. Particularly in your situation, because mostly <clears throat> they get pruned so that there's good light penetration and and because you're dry farmed mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of excessive vigorous growth okay. because you're you know restricted it's you need the water in the summertime to really get that continued growth all season long yeah. so you have less growth than an irrigated orchard which is mm -hmm. good meaning you need to have less pruning right except so, for some branches that have died and fallen off if right? so you can see like that one there that's right if they've yeah. died and fallen off it's a good idea to get those branches out yeah. And it'd be good to pull them away and dispose of yeah, them. No, I, um, I learned that from my uh, uh, pest management class. Get, get the, uh, you know, it, did they suffer from Eutypha and Esca? These don't, no. Okay, no. okay. But, but they do have another disease that oh, we, well, we came out to look at. We came before, to look at. Yeah. That, yeah. that resides in dead wood. And so it's, a, oh. it's really a wood decayer. Right. Um, but it, it, there are some new... Um, sort of strains of that wood decay, mm. we call it bot disease. Bot, okay. That, um, that will actually get in and start attacking uh, healthy, vigorous wood and kill it itself. Uh -huh. And so if you see a lot of black nuts hanging on there, that can be a sign that that might be starting. Is it a xylem based, do you remember? Um, it actually, let me see, Botryosphyria comes in. I don't actually remember how uh -huh. it travels. Okay. It doesn't really, it's not like it goes in and travels up and down. Okay. It oh. comes in through a wound and it's like canker. So it comes in through a wound and it moves in and it sort of consumes the wood right around where it enters. Yeah, okay. And so... Um, and black line is not, it's not in this area yet. Yes, it is. Oh, so it we're, be, this yeah. whole orchard over here is shut down because of it. Really? Yes. And okay. we're just seeing the first signs in our orchard. Okay. We're okay. seeing we've got a couple of trees that hasn't mm -hmm. killed it. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting to see how much leaves come off before we do our pruning, actually, mm -hmm. to yeah. see if there's... Oh. Because because of the drought, we lost some limbs, exactly. too, you yeah. know? And yeah. so we're <clears throat> going to be yeah. waiting a little longer yeah. to see what happens on ours. I was reading, you just, you just cut a piece of the bark away from the graft union, right? And then you can see if there's black line right at, right at the junction of the graft. You can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another thing, well, with black walnuts, 
Um, black walnuts actually sucker a lot from the base when they have black line disease. Now they mm. sucker a little bit from the base anyway, but I mean yeah. not uh -huh. excessively. And so if you start to see trees suckering and they don't look as healthy and oh, full and everything sign. on top, that's a sign and that's when you'd want to check. Okay. You know, otherwise, oh, okay. otherwise you know, no, no reason to take to wound the tree yeah. to check okay, that's when, good to know. when there's no sign of it, you know. You know, yeah. I've mm. got a, a question, a curiosity. Our trees aren't as old as these, but they're, you know, been out there 20, 30 years now or something. Okay. I'm wondering about what you're saying. He doesn't have much burls. We've got Hugungus burls on mm -hmm. a bunch of our trees. Mm -hmm. Now, why would the black walnut hmm. and, our, and a younger tree start producing more burl? And these are older trees. And they don't have much. That's about as close as he has to it. Could be a, could be a money maker. Uh, to a burl growing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm curious. Well, you know, it, it could actually be a, a different variety of black walnut. So there's... That very well, because you know, where we got our starts, I know, Charlie, that place wasn't even in existence. Mm -hmm. So that could yeah, be... Because there's, you know, Texas black walnut, there's California yeah. black walnut, there's eastern black walnut, and some are bigger, more vigorous, and others yeah. are less vigorous, and so... Uh, it'll I don't know. That's... Were you calling Don Wood? Yeah. Huh? Were you calling? No, I was Don calling Don? my dad. Oh, your dad. He would, would know. know okay. What the want, what but the they're gone. Are. Okay. So I'll get those for you. Like I say, I think mm -hmm. the main is Hartley. Okay. But there's something else, and I forget. Yeah. Don might know too, huh? You think? Yeah, it's a possibility. You know Don, you know Don Wood? Uh, I know his name, yeah. but I'll, I don't know I'll who tell he you is. what. His I'll name give sounds Don familiar. a call. He's one of the originals, I guess he is. Yeah, he owned most of Blackhawk before it was Blackhawk, oh, like 1,600 okay. acres. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but he, he apparently did some farming on the property before he bought it, but mm -hmm. he's getting 83. And... All right. So here's, I mean, we can find out about the variety, and we don't need to know about the variety right now to, yeah. to talk about planning and doing things ahead. So okay. uh, one of the things is, is that you've got a lot of brush piled up here, and, yeah. and if there is Botryospheria, yeah. that might have come into this area it would be in the dead wood mm -hmm. and okay. so we don't want to leave it hanging around right, we want right. to get it away from the trees and sometimes people chip it yeah. i don't probably there's not chipping material down here or you can pile it up somewhere and burn it yeah yeah i didn't have um, a burn permit so i was going to just get a shipper just buy one so yeah it was a good investment anyway yeah okay are we allowed to just burn it well, no, you, you, need, you would need have to get a burn permit to do it. You'd have to do it at a certain time. Oh, okay. And usually in the winter time or in the springtime yeah. uh, is the time when there's clear burn day. So the, the fire department would declare a burn day. You'd have to have an area that would be away from your trees so when the fire came up it wasn't scorching any yeah. of the other trees. And you certainly wouldn't want to have it on dry grass. Because, you know. okay. And so, you know, you almost, if you did a fire, you might almost have to do it like, you know, oh. in a driveway or something where, where, the, where you yeah. wouldn't be causing uh, danger somewhere else. Yeah. Um, another thing I think that's important yeah. for, okay. for a dry farm situation is to remove the weeds. Yeah. Now, this looks pretty good. To remove the weeds. He just mowed it uh, two weeks ago. Mowing is good. Yeah. And that's why it looks so nice and uniform. Cover so it's crop. good that they're not getting up. Usually sometime around the middle of March, our rains fall off. They haven't this year. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the soil is dry okay, enough that it could be worked. I see He's going to disc it. That's exactly it. You yeah. want to get in here and get rid of these guys that are using yeah. up your moisture. Yeah. And and so as soon as you can get in and as soon as it's practical without hurting the soil, yeah. you want to disc it under and get rid of the weeds yeah. so that He's the shopping trees... and he's waiting for the rain to stop because we have a, apparently we have... The soil is impossible to... It's wet, wet, wet. It's wet and, and it's rain. getting harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting harder and we're wondering if that's because... As long as I remember, we never got more than maybe one inch at any one time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the last 50 years that I can tell. Mm -hmm. Last year, three inches. Yeah. Two weeks later, two inches. Yeah. Yeah. In the same way here. And we're wondering if it's take float in the soil and then each time it gets tighter. Oh. Because we I had a place where I could almost crumble it. Mm-hmm. But it was so hard I could hardly get and it was dark brown, wet looking. Yeah. Huh. And I could hardly get the disc in and I was sure I was gonna break a disc yeah. at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wet soil. Yeah. Almost crumbling but not. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. yeah, it's it's difficult because when you get all that much and last last week we had two inches up 
you know, mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. in my area in mm-hmm. April. I mean, we yeah. don't yeah. usually get like a quarter inch here yeah. or crazy. maybe one inch yeah. max, you know. So the, it's good to have the extra moisture, but yeah. you do have to be careful that you're not damaging the soil and working it when it's too and wet. And it's on the soil. Now, we don't disc anymore. Mm-hmm. We used to, because, you know, the tap roots, when we've got it all mm-hmm. uh, rolled down and then we flail it. We don't mm-hmm. disc anymore because the reason we used to do that was, of course, the weeds, but mostly just keep the moisture mm-hmm. in the ground because we'd roll it smooth hard. Mm-hmm. But now that they're in the, the water source, mm-hmm. that's a lot of extra work mm-hmm. and cost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by flailing it, by the time summer, it's burned it off and it's just basically mm-hmm. bare wood out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But you're advocating still disking and rolling it even at this age? Well, be- because... Um gets the nutrients in the ground, right? Is one reason. Well, it can get the nutrients in the ground, but when you know these these weeds can use up three or four inches of water in yeah. the top foot of soil, in the top, you know, probably yeah. eighteen inches grasses and mustards and whatever mm. else. But mm. this is mostly grass, so it can use a couple three inches of water, and that can be the difference, particularly in short water years. Mm. The yeah. difference oh. between whether the trees like get through all right or they really are struggling. Oh. So the more water you can save for the trees now, exactly. and they do have these upper roots that are going to be really active in the springtime when it's all moist. They're going to they're yeah. going to use the upper water first because it's mm. easier for them to get at that. Well, and, and that's so, what they're doing now yeah. while we can't that's disc right. it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it won't okay. be doing that once mm-hmm. it dries up, mm-hmm. obviously, and then that's, of course, when the disc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the disking mostly isn't, and I know that they did that in the grapes too, the dry farm grapes, that they would disc it and they would roll it to seal it and that yeah. was the idea that it would keep the water from evaporating and it probably does work but I, I think that the bigger thing is that you're getting rid of the weeds with their roots taking water some out some of the you weeds know. around here do okay. yeah. yeah there are yeah. certain types of weeds yeah mm-hmm. that it's, really yeah it just ends up saving more water for the trees mm-hmm. yeah so the good news about having black walnut here is that you can actually see I was going to look uh, you know, without the yeah. trees having leafed out, it's a little bit difficult to tell yeah. how they're doing yeah. in terms of black line and all that. And, uh-huh. you know, um, and actually, if you've only been here for four, four months, months yeah. you haven't really seen the trees in, in the full cycle. The whole in the yeah. full cycle. Yeah. And so you don't really know if there was suckering that has typically gone on. Do you know? There, if yeah, no, they don't get enough suckers here hardly to just by coming That's out really and cut. And they've been cut off. Uh, there were a few trees yeah. that had. Yeah, there's yeah. a few, but they're, that's not ours. Okay. It's, we have bushes around ours. Really? That's okay. Perfect. That's We've perfect. had to cut them okay. twice sometimes. Okay. So it's pretty unlikely that you've got a lot of black line in here if there's really oh. very little suckering that's okay. going on. Yeah. So that's, that's good. That's good to know. So that so if you have black line, you won't, it won't sucker? If you have black line, it will sucker. Oh, it will sucker. Yeah. 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 We got lots of... Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's, but that's not the only reason. Okay, it good. Because the black walnut has a tendency to do that, but, you know, it'll throw a sucker here and there. If it has black line, it tends to throw a lot more suckers. I'm trying so to think of bushy. the one tree we do know has black line. If it, <clears throat> I don't recall whether that one ever gets suckers or not. So, oh, so I have another, to look this year. So another, so another question down here. <laughs> okay. So we have some trees that were lost, right? So they've okay. they've been cut off, and uh, you know, I I think uh, the intent would be to like even it out again to to replant uh, new walnuts here. Mm-hmm. Uh, is better to get rid of the stump first, or absolutely. And yeah, and he, here's what the deal is: is that um, I guess these trees were planted. Yeah. It's it's actually quite difficult to replant new trees into yeah. an old orchard because mm-hmm. the new trees aren't going to be as um, water the they're going to need more water to get them started oh, I see. so you have to yeah. like provide special oh, so water like to a the customized new trees. you have to customize irrigation those plan. things like the and first five years or f- well even? for a long time just depending on oh, how okay. you know you have to look at the at how they're behaving and okay. You're probably not gonna. They're not gonna do well if you plant them right in the same place. Okay. So oftentimes, what people will do is they will, they will rather than, well, they'll replant a section of an orchard rather than individual oh, trees. I see. Okay. Um, so they can water it, yeah, eat more easily. Well, so that they, so that everything gets watered all at once. They all have yeah. the same light. So yeah. now in your situation, because they're spaced so far apart, and mm-hmm. and it's good that they're spaced far apart. Forty foot spacing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, that's what you need for 
dry farm, so that means mm -hmm. each tree has yeah. access to more soil yeah, okay. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the water stored in the soil and the nutrients. Okay. So they have a bigger reservoir for them to draw on for the summer all around them and okay. deep. But sometimes, so if you want to replant, I wouldn't plant in the same spot. I would plant in between. First get rid of the stump first. You can get rid of the stump and then plant you know, in between. I have to watch so you don't plant there, you low. plant in between the two. Oh, okay. So okay. you're not, because even yeah. though you get rid of the stump, there's all these roots in the ground, and right. they're all decaying, and there's all yeah. these organisms that want yeah. that want to decompose yeah. walnut roots. Yeah. And if you plant right in the same spot, they're not going to do well. That makes sense. So if you, if you but then you, you're having an orchard that is kind of offset yeah, 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 a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got two different things. It doesn't really make a difference, because um, as long as you can still get through one direction with, and mm -hmm. he probably goes two directions with the disc. Yeah. So it does screw up the second the disking. direction disking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good point, good point. Way. Yeah. But do you use a good stump grinder? Yeah. You can use a stump yeah. grinder okay. to get it out of there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oftentimes, what people will do when they remove trees yeah. is they'll. Um, push it My over with a backhoe. Uh -huh. fact, so I'll you get a lot a more of the tree roots right that come out, oh. or they'll dig it with a backhoe. And you so almost got all, some of the roots coming out, too, with it. A whole bunch of roots will come out with yeah. it, because, yeah. and then you don't it's need to deal with the stump. No. Right? The stump comes out, but yeah, then you somehow it, you oh. need to cut up the tree and get rid of all uh, the roots in it yeah. and everything. Hey, Todd, I don't yeah. know if you heard this. This is interesting. She said, if you had a dead tree, you push it over with a backhoe, and that'll bring the roots up with it. Well, yeah. I said, a, instead of just cutting it off, and now you, you're yeah, dealing with... Yeah, but don't do that with the those. I yeah. Try. yeah. But, uh, oh, these roots are <laughs> way over here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, push them over? Yeah. And we've done that trying to get the uh, burl out and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, something like that. I just grind it a foot below the surface mm -hmm. and bury it. Yeah. Uh, you can if you don't not yeah. gonna plant something right. Now. Yeah, so, I mean, she's saying, you, she's saying don't replant right on top of it though. You no. want you want to do plant in between off center, but yeah, because yeah. screws, yeah. screws up your, it may screw up your, uh, your, your lining. Yeah, it, oh, it yeah. cheats your lining. So, um, yeah, but by the time you'd plant another tree, you know what, three four years for the black before you graft. So I'm I'm trying to figure um, out a timeline. You for know, you. usually you would plant. Uh, you know, and as a matter of fact, rather than do, uh, we've got some new walnut root stocks. Oh. And the black walnut is what was has traditionally been used in old California. And yeah. then, then um, there's a new root stock that's a cross between the black and the English walnut. It's called Paradox. So it's a hybrid, and it has it's more vigorous than black. And so in a replant situation where they're going to be a little bit at a disadvantage because they're not going to they're, they're, they're going to need to be babied with water and they're not going to yeah. be as self-reliant as the big old trees um, there are so it seems like it might be worthwhile to use a paradox rather than mm. a black because it's going to be mm. more vigorous than the black yeah. in a reef plant so you could use paradox and um, okay and there's some very vigorous paradox um, and where's the supplier for that what uh, source would you go to? Yeah, to? probably the same you'd get Any, the black from. Yeah, and okay. I'll get that for oh, okay. me. It's over in the valley. Any okay. Nursery, yeah, we'll yeah. Okay. They have some brand new paradox there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the, the, the one. The lead is a yeah. yeah. little more. Little more up there. There's one yeah. yeah, they got yeah. a couple of those yeah. down there at Livermore Airport. A fly formation here. I, I, I flew one out of Livermore in, in formation. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, but I was I was in the back seat. But I, they let me fly it when I got up in the air. It's yeah, cool. That'd be me. Okay. So you were saying? Uh, um, so when you when you buy, you don't have to buy the rootstock and graft it in place. You can buy a grafted tree. So you buy yeah, yeah. paradox with whatever you want on top. But I would suggest that you need to find out what variety. Yeah. These yeah. are first so okay. that you would plant a variety that was either the same yeah. or would harvest the same time so you don't need yeah. to harvest and all oh. that. Yeah. yeah. I'll get you that information. That okay. So, so yeah, if you already buy a grafted tree and the trees are probably not anymore, they're probably 20 bucks a tree. Oh, and, that, uh, and if it's, is there a guarantee that the graft takes? Because I know ours, sometimes the grafts take, sometimes they don't. Sometimes yeah. only one or two take and you yeah. put in four. 
it's a that's a, if you buy a tree from a nursery that's it's already grafted it and it's a be. big it's a tree. Yeah. So you'd buy one that was three quarter inch stock. Yeah. And it's you know it's already grown in the nursery for a year. Yeah. Uh, so they they'll graft it either in the fall or the spring, and and then uh, if it's real vigorous, then they may be able to if they graft it in the spring, they may be able to bud it in the spring. They may be able to dig it that fall and sell it, but they've got you know. Yeah. Eight, eight feet of growth on it in the nursery, yeah. Yeah. The irrigation and everything, and so then they'll dig it. Can you can you buy even more mature ones, like in, in the, the bigger uh, size? So you, you, uh, if you have like isolated spots, you don't you don't have to worry about the watering as much. So something more like well, they're four. tap proof. Even a, you're yeah. talking about a tree that that's about that big around on the base. Yeah. Oh. Or some. Remember that yeah, tap yeah, root yeah. goes down. So yeah. those boxes are only about four feet tall by four feet. Yeah. So you still need all the. You know. You need you'd, a, you'd be better off getting a smaller tree that's oh. vigorous so it can okay. develop the roots. Yeah. Rather see, than yeah. one that's been growing in potted soil. Okay. So when you get it, usually you get them in the dormant season. Yeah. And and they dig them in the dormant season, mm -hmm. and they put them in the refrigerator and hold them there until you're ready to plant. Right. And so then you just plant this bare root tree. Okay, so what's the best time? Of, what's time, best time of year for planting? In the winter time. Winter. Winter. Or yeah. or they'll keep them in the refrigerator. Yeah. So usually, okay. if there's a dry place in the winter time yeah. when you can get them in, so usually in you know February yeah. or March yeah. or even April or even May, if the so you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. As yeah. long as they're in the refrigerator, you just want to plant them before the weather gets hot, and then. Okay. You're going to have to um, water them by hand, tank them in. Okay. And are they susceptible on, on, to nematodes? They are. Okay. They are, which is one of the issues with replanting. There's nothing really you can do if you've got nematodes, and that's also would help, like not planting. Unless right you heat the, the rootstock, right? That, uh, he, you, heating the rootstock uh, at the nursery will get killed in the nematodes, I guess. Then there's and, no the, nematodes the, in the, in the nursery hot water room. bath no. process. No. Oh, There's okay. no nematodes. The, the nematodes are in the soil, not in the plant material that you get. Okay. It's okay. in the soil. Okay. Um, there's other things. Viruses can get killed with heat treatment and that kind of thing. But yeah. there's yeah. There, and we do that more with grapes, and we don't do that with yeah. walnuts because we just don't have the virus issues with walnuts that. Okay. Where you, you know, if the walnuts have a virus there, which is black line is a virus. Yeah. It takes down the walnut. <laughs> so. Yeah. So you don't yeah. see any major nightmares. Well, you know, you can't tell. What I see yeah. is it's it's a, it's a nice and even, and I see that there's space properly for dry farmed, and I see that you've got light. It looks good, but mm -hmm. without yeah. be before they leaf out, it's sort of hard to tell what's going on. And I and I think particularly if somebody, like if the the um, the lady that had the property um, was was getting older and wasn't able to take care of it as well, yeah. then I think one of the issues might be that, um, you know, th that the grass wasn't getting taken care of maybe oh. on a timely basis, and so there's less water available to those trees during yeah. the growing season. Yeah. And so maybe they're were you still this, a little bit. Uh, those years she was sick, were you, were you I have, I have done everything on this for the last 15 years oh, or beautiful. about 20, so I know yeah, what's beautiful. that. And we haven't done anything for, a few years? 2007? Mm -hmm. or, or maybe eight, something like that. Okay. And we just picked up what we could and cleaned them. Mm -hmm. And I went around and sold them. Uh, we had them drying on the racks, the old fashioned way, the okay. square racks with the mm -hmm. saw horses. There used <laughs> to be a barn there. Okay. And we had them all in there and mm -hmm. brought some of our pictures. But yeah. We haven't done anything other than once a year I come down and disc and, and uh, roll the orchard. Beautiful. And then any suckers, I don't know who really picked them off. Yeah, uh, but that sounds I good because there's hardly any. Yeah, that's and, good for and, in but terms they of haven't line. done yeah. anything yeah. with yeah. the orchard for at least the last 10 years okay. other than what I've done in here. Okay. And that's why you got probably uh, this pruning and you did some others because mm -hmm. it hasn't been pruned in mm -hmm. 10 years at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. But it's an older, it, these are older trees. These were some of the first ones out here. Interesting. Uh, what is the lifespan of these trees in Norway? You know, they can, the lifespan is yeah. one thing. Productive oh. life yeah. is That's another thing, you the know. the other thing, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, in a, in a modern irrigated kind of situation, they think 25 to 30 years mm -hmm. is... Pr productive. Yeah, you're getting three tons, four tons per acre, and then when yeah. it gets down to one and a half tons per acre, two tons per acre, it used to be, oh. you know, 
20 years ago, two tons per acre was pretty good. Yeah, now 20 years is like, oh, only two tons per acre, you know? Is that dry spacing? Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, so well. see, here's the deal with so dry farm orchards. Right. You get less because they yeah. just spacing don't have... Spacing is... Yeah. The space, well, the spacing and because they don't have enough water. So when they don't get as much water, the nuts are smaller. You don't oh. set as many nuts and all okay. that. So you're not going to get quite that thing, but you don't have the cost of the irrigation system yeah, yeah. and the water and mm -hmm. all that kind of. So you don't have that irrigation expense. You, mm -hmm. and, and and then the issue is um, you've got a way to harvest, to pick up. You can just send them all to the dry yard. Mm -hmm. If they go to the dry yard, um, they're, they're then, then they're off into the commercial chain. So mm -hmm. you've just sold them. Mm -hmm. The first thing you got to do <clears throat> if you're going to do commercial is find somebody to buy them. No, you know, to yeah. dry them or something, yeah. nobody's going to want to dry them yeah. and handle them unless you've got a source to That's right. sell. His so, idea was just put a sign up and have people come and uh, fill a bucket. And you said that by, was okay. By, yeah. Well, there's you, not that many walnuts. This, does, this is yeah. old enough orchard. It doesn't produce enough to justify the cost of the equipment. Yeah. Okay. But you could, I think... Because I know how people that come out when I used to sell eggs from my mm -hmm. porch and mm -hmm. we have tons mm -hmm. of people. You put a sign out there, say, you pick a dollar a bucket. Mm -hmm. I've got tons of those white pails and yeah, bags. Yeah. And they can park like right <laughs> here. Yeah. And kids, and all these people that have moved yeah, out in yeah. the country would love to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that year, right, the last year we did it, I we got quite a few, but I spent weeks running to all these farmers markets mm -hmm. and they'd buy three bags yeah. two bags and maybe yeah. two weeks later a bag yeah so but i didn't know where else to get rid of them yeah, and yeah, our yeah, people yeah. couldn't yeah. yeah now it's not to say there isn't somebody diamond or somebody will take I, yeah, yeah and i will ask don he knows somebody down south mm -hmm. like in san jose or something that He's taken these before. Mm -hmm. Let me. Matter of fact, okay. Somebody okay. got so a there's pen. A, there's a lot. There's cotton any nut. There's yeah. all sorts of yeah. nuts, crane, and there's mm -hmm. diamond. You could still sell them to diamond, even though not a grower is cooperative anymore. But cotton any nut is right in Oakley. I'll ask Don because okay. he, yeah. he yeah, I'll took, give him a call. He yeah. took one, and I'll find out where he took them. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a real because they know okay. the orchard and the nuts. And they'll do all smaller places like this because it's relatively small on the scale, right? This lot. Oh. It is relatively small. What was your question about uh, the small? So the companies, uh, this is not so small that they will just won't laugh, come small. laugh at me. <laughs> Ours is real small. Well, you're already, yeah, yeah. It, is a, it is small. That's yeah. why it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, and, and take a look at your last mm -hmm. yields because it's like, yeah. oh, well, we've got three tons of walnuts that we want to get rid of. And it's sort of yeah. like, well, yeah. we don't want to bother with it. I mean, it could yeah. be. But yeah. if it's just a matter of bringing, get them dried and then mm -hmm. having them pick up when they pick up other things and just keeping... A chip yeah. that yours is this three tons and yeah, it was in the, you know. they're in the neighborhood anyway. Right? Yeah, because yeah. so. you have to get them over there to the dryer and yeah. then okay. yeah, and okay. then they get them. There, there must be the people dryer. out there. We just never have had to deal with yeah. them because. Yeah. Yeah. But I know Don has taken them somewhere before, and I have never asked. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's also um, because this is a small, uh, quite a small property. Um, and because the nut set is probably quite light because of the dry farm situation, mm -hmm. uh, and because it sounds like you don't have a resident population of these late season moss. At least he doesn't in his franquettes. So late, franquettes, late, late season, late season moss like oh. codling moth and navel orange worms are the ones oh. that are going to come in and get particularly navel orange. Pollinate. Worm. Not pollinate. They're going to come in at husk split and in, and get into the nuts just. Oh. at harvest time mm -hmm. oh the only thing we really have is sometimes we'll get a bad uh husk fly oh okay that's about the only thing we get and last yeah. the year before two three years ago <laughs> during the drought we got real bad okay which i thought would be strange being dry you shouldn't but maybe that's, too, yeah. that's the only moisture they could find so they went there instead of yeah but i haven't seen really anything like that so we're pretty lucky, I think, as yeah. far as bugs and That's considering right. what used to be out here. Yeah. The bigger the orchards and stuff, the more likely you'll find you some kind it. of disease or bug thing. And it builds up because there's a lot more trees yeah. to build up and on. And so. we've been real fortunate mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. So So let's talk about ground squirrels. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so uh, we have a big problem. They're all over yeah. and they're, they're getting under the roots. and. Okay. Uh, 
And so I know uh, from my vineyard pest management class, I actually had to teach the section of rodent management. So I know about uh, antiquarian baits and acute baits, right? What's your preference? Do you have a preference? Oats. Huh? Blue oats. What's that? the, it, That's what a, I buy from her. Yeah, it's the grain <laughs> bait that the ag department makes available. Is that an anticoagulant? I believe it is. Okay. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and you put it either you can either sprinkle it lightly. I have the tubes, the tube systems, okay. the bait stations. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you, you you get the kind for the bait station. There's different um, okay. strengths. And so that's what you do in. Um, Maybe she shouldn't listen to this part. Nah. So. Well, that's what it, it that works in the summertime when the grass yeah. is not. So in June yeah. is when you put out your Candy bait stations. Right, and right. The chloroform yeah. and the green is the antidote for it. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, is yeah. the reason, and they yeah. won't even start selling it till May. That's right. At yeah. least after after these have dried down, yeah. so that there's not a lot of green for them to eat, yeah. and that this is what, and, and that that's what they'd naturally yeah. be eating the grain after the grass is dried down. And the nice thing so, is is. Once they eat it, they go down, they stay down in their hole while they die. Hmm. Never found one up on the top. And another, uh, so there's ground squirrels, particularly if you've got a big population, it's... Well, it's a tripping hazard. I almost broke my ankle once, exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so it's not, you can't just do something once and it's going to go away. It's something yeah. that you keep after. And so yeah. there's two, two approaches. One is the grain bait that we do in the summertime. That's the blue oats is what he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in the, in the, when the ground is moist, mm -hmm. um, there's actually smoke bombs. Yeah. They're fumigants, and mm -hmm. you can... And, mm -hmm. And you do that when the ground is moist, mm -hmm. so um, so the smoke doesn't. Escape. So you don't start a fire. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. And also yeah. because the smoke stays in the ground when yeah. the ground is moist. You know what yeah. I use yeah. as speaking of smoke that seems to be a little more effective? I take my pickup, and I've got the exhaust. Oh yeah. And I hook that up, stick <laughs> it down, look to see what holes might Where it's coming, coming up. Yeah. Plug those. Carbon monoxide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes. It, it will work too. That's mm -hmm. right. And it's That's free, right. huh? And it's, it's free. free. But and, there's and, a and lot of And I didn't hear anybody say holes. that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure what the legality of is of that. Yeah. But I don't care. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not the police. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so they, they have these, it's like, oh, well, if it's not labeled for that, you can't use it, but it's like, yeah. well. Yeah. When we yeah. were kids, we used to take gunnies. Part of our jobs was take gunny sacks, and we'd cut them in strips, roll them up, tie them up with some wire, and then kerosene, dad used to put something else, soak that, and then we'd take that milk can with those little bundles, go around to the holes, throw them in there, stand away and light and them, light bury them. them. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. then they burn in the yeah. poof. Yeah. And that was, I don't think yeah. it's as effective as the blue oats and some of the other things, mm -hmm. but. Well, one of the things that's nice about a bomb kind of situation is Usually in February and March is uh, they start to come out of their he, winter dormancy. He tried the propane cannon thing one year. I guess the neighbors. <laughs> oh, I like have that. that. Yeah. yeah, one of those. That's very satisfying, but it gets about half of them. Yeah. It's not as you know. It's not and it's all that so effective. loud. Yeah, it's not as effective, and everybody thinks you're firing <laughs> a howitzer that, out here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So it's although it, it it really makes you feel good to stick it down there and hear the big boom and everything. They're you better know. for rabbits or badgers yeah. or something where you're going to use it just once, not yeah. all day. Not all day, I think that's right. Yeah. But with a with a smoke bomb, mm -hmm. if you um, do that when they're still in the burrows, so the whole family is down there in the burrow, they haven't mm -hmm. really come out and started to yeah. run around, yeah. and you're throwing the smoke bomb down there. And you're looking for smoke come out anywhere else and burying them mm -hmm. so yeah, that they yeah. really get fumigated in there. Mm -hmm. And now you've just killed, like, with in one hole you've killed the yeah. eight gophers that are, or the squir ground squirrels that are going to come out and all go out and form their new. That's in the winter. In the yeah. winter time, yeah. 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 It, but yeah. in in the springtime. Oh, so, so February, okay. March. Okay. And and even April. I mean, I if mm -hmm. you if you haven't started seeing them above ground yet, then most of them are still down in their burrows. Mm -hmm. They're up and around. They're up. It's just yeah. overcast. Yeah. Maybe they're sleeping in. Yeah. yeah. But they're mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. stuff. No, so those are the two times. And you can continue to do the bombs mm -hmm. until the grass, you know, till you're worried about starting to fire, until the grass dries down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you, yeah, you do it when okay. the ground is moist because it really keeps the fumigant in, in the for, tunnel for, system. For a property this size, how many bait stations would we need like uh, in June or July? Um, you know, it, it seems like you just put them. I don't you, know quite you, how you, many you'd have to you just put judge. A, I, I start out with four, you still have them, then you okay. go up to six. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's an ongoing, yeah, ground yeah. squirrels out here is something that's yeah. a year-round thing. Yeah. 
And yeah. you got to keep your eye on the bait station. So you yeah. fill the bait station and and right. look at it every yeah. day to make sure they're not consuming it all because yeah. if they eat it and then they don't eat it for a couple of days and then they come back and eat it, yeah. it doesn't work as well. So they need right. to continually feed. Oh, okay. And so you have to keep the bait station full. Okay. Yeah. And, and well and not spilled. You know, you're so. again, you're the I don't want to debate, but usually if you fill them all the way up, eventually the pigs will get in them. So I usually put oh. about half a coffee can and in just fill it every and check year. it every week. Yeah, perfect. And something like that. Because oh. if you fill, I had a guy that had 300 pounds yeah. of it out. I shot a couple of pigs. Yeah. I got sick yeah. from eating the pig. Oh, oh. And then his wife goes, oh, I hope you didn't get one of Gary left 300 pounds and made it all up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. tore the bait no. stations That's up. Right. And she was more concerned <laughs> of the cost of the bait station. Yeah. The, oh. the PVC, yeah. how they had to replace it. But anyways, yeah. that's my thought on for this particular yeah. area. And actually that's a good point because when I mean keep keep it full, I don't mean fill it all the way up to yeah, the yeah, staff. Yeah, 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 I mean yeah. always make sure, make sure it doesn't go empty. in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I just... Because it, if something does happen to and it falls over, you do lose that, and then there's a pile of it sitting on the ground that dogs can get into, and mm -hmm. you know. And, I don't and know you if yours have it, but I always put a 45 on the end yeah. Yeah. because yeah. if not, it, as they walk out, they kick yeah. it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I know. You don't want I, that. Yeah. So a 45 that can still get in, but it kind of helps. I know yeah, the other the other longer. concern is the Endangered Species Act, right? So the, the limits the size of three inches mm -hmm. of the tube. So other little critters like fox, are in there. foxes yeah. and yeah. other things. I don't know that foxes would be quite in Not here, green. but no. mostly in San Joaquin Valley. Mm -hmm. but, you wouldn't want yeah. dogs to get in uh, The red foxes, I haven't or seen dog. one I, I don't know that dogs would be all that interested in grain, but you know, they could as a matter of like, the, and because it's anticoagulant, they would have to like only eat that. They're not going to get their head in there though. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the right. So don't worry about that. The turkeys are yeah. about the only ones that'll eat exactly. it. Exactly, that's right. Now I have seen, uh, there was for a while some peacocks that were getting into them, oh. but they're gone now. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? But the peacocks can't quite get in there, you know. No. Well, this is one if, that if it was spilled can, out. Yeah. yeah. And they were checking on it, and I told the guy about the 45s. Yeah. But, yeah. So maybe uh, if you happen to be in the neighborhood in a few months, and then you can see it when it's in in like full bloom. You yeah. just stop by for a few minutes and. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you give me a call in in June? Okay. June or July. That'd be great. And, yeah, uh, and that'll remind me. Yeah, uh, especially if you're going to be in the area anyway for yeah, some other or reason. Actually, June or, or July. I'm 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 uh, probably going to be not available in July, but in okay. June. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, because I mean it. 